You know, Jake, every night you take that thing off. What is it? Well, this here is called a medicine bag. Now, the Indians use it uh, to keep medicine. Now, what the Indians call medicine and what the white man call medicine, they're not the same thing. You see, the, the white man uses pills, liniments, powders, and oh, even has snake oil. But the Indians, well, they use bear grease and herbs. Now look at this here. Now these beads are for trading. I have survived many a cold night because I was able to trade some of these beads with Indians. Indians that weren't intent upon taking my scalp. You may find yourself out miles away from any kind of post, and all you may have are these beads. Now this, you might recognize, it's ivory. It's also known as an elk's tooth. Now, this is magic. See, Indians believe that by keeping part of an animal, I keep part of his strength and this tooth is supposed to make me very aware of what's going on around me now this is a claw from a bobcat more magic see this is supposed to make me agile in a fight and fierce and this well, to you and me, this just may be a piece of quartz crystal. But to the Indians, I call it ice that doesn't melt. You see, they sometimes don't quite get the idea of being able to see through a rock. So if I tell them it's ice, they seem to understand okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of magic. And then there's something called miracles. This represents the most powerful of all I reckon. I remember I was out crossing the West Texas Badlands and I happened to cross a feller. He was all dressed up, didn't have no provisions or nothing, and he was dressed like a dandy. Well it was if he'd been sent out to wander and die. <laughs> he sounds like a different kind of feller. He was at that. Now I've been to a camp meeting or two, and I've heard enough fire and brimstone to last me through a mess of engine raids. But this feller talked different. How so? Well, he talked about a God who wasn't angry all the time. He was loving. Where you headed there, friend? To Santa Cristi. Santa Cristi? I never hear of that place. It's going to take you a ways to get there. I'll get there in God's own time, brother. This is my path. I know it. I would be grateful, though, for a drink of water if you can spare it. You ain't got no canteen? You... Well, that just don't make no sense, man, being out here in the middle of nowhere with no provisions? Say, what What do you got in that box? And, and that animal, are they stolen and you on the run or something? <laughs> well, I assure you, I have not committed any offense. Inside this crate are books that I'm taking to the mission at Lysenda Christi. Well, they're not stolen. You may feel free to inspect them if you wish. You no. may even have one. Here, take one, please. No. I don't want it. I ain't got room to carry nothing I don't need to survive. Oh, but this will help you to survive. It is a small book, but the message inside is bigger and more powerful than all you see around you. Oh, sure. If I'm attacked by renegades or bushwhacked by outlaws, I'm going to pull out that little book and I'm going to read to them. Mister, 
You've been standing out in the sun too long. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Oh, please, forgive me. I have not made myself very clear. You see, the book is a story. It teaches us how to live, prepares us for life and the things which we will encounter along the way. So if those things you mentioned do happen, well, you'll know what to do. I don't want it. Do you need a bullet from my colt to clean out your ears? Oh, look, mister. Reason I don't want your book is I can't read. That's why. Well, that's okay. I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> I would be beholden to you if you would be so kind as to forgive my persistent nature. Say, do you mind if I travel along with you? Seems that we're traveling the same path, for a while anyway. There hasn't been anyone along for quite some time, and I would enjoy your company. We can make camp in a few hours, and I can gather wood, draw fresh water, or whatever else I could do to be of help. Oh, I suppose it wouldn't hurt none, but you don't have to worry about looking for water. This here is barren country. There ain't no water around here for 40 miles or so. Well, I got enough to last till tomorrow, but the animals will have to make do with what they can find to graze on when we make camp. The Almighty has his own ways, and I've learned that his love is unending. Well, I've heard that. Way well, I figured, he's got enough to do without worrying about old Jake. Well, I think he does worry about us, friend. You know, he had his own little boy. The boy was here on earth. Well, he didn't get here the normal way. God gave the little boy to a woman to bear. The way I see it, only a loving God would part with his own. Well, maybe so. We better make camp. No more for a good day's ride. Told you the horses will have to do on what they can graze on. That's all the water we got. Friend, as I told you earlier, this boy of Jesus grew up, and as he grew, he asked 12 men to be his partners. Together they spread the words of the Almighty. They performed miracles, healing folks and raising folks up from the dead. I've heard tell of that. They accused him of something he didn't do and sentenced him to be crucified. Kill him for something he didn't do? That don't seem right. Why, have you ever been held accountable for a crime you didn't commit? When he was crucified, he asked his followers not to save him, that it was God's will that he take your wrongdoing and mine to the cross with him. Why? For love, for you, for me. They whipped him, beat him, put a crown of thorns on his head, and then nailed him to a cross to die. But three days later, as had been foretold, he rose again. He's now in heaven. He did that for me? A place in heaven awaits you if you choose to accept him and follow him. Since you don't have any need of the books, please accept this as a remembrance from me for this day. Thank you. What, what's your name? Folks call me Gideon. And, and you're not on the run or nothing. I just take books to the mission. 
Thank you, Gideon. Yep, it was a day just about like today. I still remember Gideon's words. A feller I never even met gave his life for me. Now remember this, son. To give your life for another is the greatest thing you can ever do for a man. He did it for me. He did it for you, too. But what about Lucinda Christie? Did you ever find it? Oh, I reckon I did in my own way. I was down in San Antonio some years back and came across the Padre. Asked him if he'd ever heard of it. He said he hadn't. But I asked him what it meant. He said, loosely translated, it means Christ's path, or path of Christ. You know, someday I want to meet up with this feller. Maybe get one of those little crosses for myself. 